know, for most of us, uh, especially those who try to live in some relationship with the scripture, there exists one, two biblical texts that command our lives, words that beckon us to live more fully, to live more deeply, what we're called to live. Now for years and years and years, the outstanding text came out of the book of Deuteronomy, four words, all one syllable, thou shalt not kill. And that defined our life, to not kill, to object to killing, to object to wars, and they beckoned us to, to live that, to do that, to be nonviolent human beings. Now, 30 years ago, in and near this spot, that text was joined to a second text. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they study for war anymore. Thou shalt not kill became in that joined in our understanding to a way of interfering with the killing. Not just to say thou shalt not kill, but to literally take hammer to the weapons of death and destruction, which the eight did at the GE facility, to stand in the way of the machinery of death, to beat it into swords if we could. And these words, as we just saw, have touched the hearts of many, many, many of us and continue to touch the hearts of many as Plowshares goes into almost 90 such witnesses now. As people face trial in Washington State in the coming weeks for the most recent Plowshares witness. They touch what is most human and deep in us. It seems to me they tell us do it. Stand by it. Expose it. Expose all of the idiocy of investing the, the resources of this country into these weapons of mass destruction. God's command is so simple. Thou shalt not kill. We have made it so complex. Let that be no more among us. More. Let us embrace together this oracle of Isaiah to beat swords into plowshares and do that urgent work in which what is absolutely essential destroying these weapons, disarming these weapons, is joined to what seems absolutely impossible to it, disarming these weapons. That's the contradiction I think that we walk with and agonize over. We have to do it, we can't do it. We're called to do it, how do we do it? But we struggle to do it and to learn what that means because this, this won't keep silent, it won't give us peace, it won't let us sleep. More it feeds our imaginations, it feeds our hopes, it's a promise, and it's a promise that we're called to bet our lives on. Many of us have done it, and I think we're called to keep on keeping on. Thank you.